What's going on everyone? Today we're taking a look at the Adidas Harden Volume 8 and we're going to see if it's the future of basketball shoes or just a concept shoe without any substance. Since the late 90s, Adidas has had a track record of producing some of the craziest and most divisive basketball shoe designs on the market. This track record actually wouldn't be possible without the designer of the Nike Dunk, Peter Moore, who was approached by Adidas in 1993 to help revive their US market and launch the Adidas EQT line, a line meant for innovative technical equipment style footwear product. The creation of the EQT product line made it possible for Adidas to come up with footwear product lines like Feet You Wear, a line of basketball shoes with some of the craziest, most bulbous midsoles meant to move naturally with the dynamic movements of your foot. At the same time in 1996, Adidas was applying that Feet You Wear technology to basketball shoes for Kobe Bryant, who went on to get even more insane shoes with them, eventually ending his Adidas contract on what I like to call the toaster shoe, the Adidas Kobe 2. In recent years, Adidas has dipped heavily into insanely futuristic design with Yeezy, even making basketball shoes in the Yeezy quantum that look like spaceships. So that brings us to James Harden, who signed with Adidas in 2015 and has followed in the Adidas ethos of out of the norm styles of shoes. Harden's line started off pretty tame and has now led to some of the craziest looking basketball shoes on the market today. The volume seven before this looks like a puffer jacket and these kind of look like Paul Atreides, where my worm at threes. So is Adidas actually making the future of basketball shoes like they were trying to do in the 90s or are they copy pasting the Yeezy formula again? In the world of social media, connection is everything. Content creators, influencers and designers and all types of brands and entrepreneurs need to engage with their audience and share their online identity. And the best way to do that is with the dot bio domain name. Because instead of using a super long link tree URL that nobody really understands, Using your .bio domain for your link in bio page lets you manage all the links in one spot with a customized domain name that tells people exactly who you are. It allows you to direct people to view your work, engage with your content, or check out your latest opinions with one click. And it's really nice because it's really short, it's simple and easy to remember, and people know exactly what to expect when they click it because you can manage all your links in that one spot and free with every single .bio domain from pork bun, you get a bunch of things, I don't even know what they are. It's a W-H-O-I-S privacy, SSL certificate, web and email hosting trials and more. So why pay for the things that should be free? So make your brand look a little bit better, direct your traffic easier, and be sure to check the links in the description and make sure you use the code B-I-O-R-A or B-I-O-R-A to get your own .bio domain name for less than $3 at Pork Bun or scan the QR code on screen right now and get that $3 off your .bio domain name now. The brand is Adidas. The style is the Harden Volume 8. They come in at a stout one pound, 1.2 ounces for a size 10 and a half. They're $160 and they're made in China, which is actually a bit of a surprise. Everything up until this point in the series has been made in Vietnam. Changing the game isn't enough for a superstar like James Harden. He has to revolutionize it. The latest signature shoes from Adidas Basketball and James Harden continues to celebrate one of basketball's elite scorers and elite personalities. Rocking a full length Jet Boost midsole, these performance basketball shoes provide the support you need to dominate each and every time you step on the floor. If you wanna get a taste of the future and you're interested in a pair of Harden 8s, take a look at the links down below. It helps the channel. Taking a look at the upper, I actually don't really quite know where to start. The internal booty system fits like a sock and it's made out of knit and mesh and some woven materials as well, but all synthetic. Most interesting part about this upper is this giant sidewall. The designer of this shoe says that this has to be like James Harden. It has to be unmistakable. And I think you can definitely tell, you could see these from a mile away on the court. These giant sidewall shapes on either side of the shoe are really supposed to act like a chassis and they're supposed to help lock in your foot and really prevent you from rolling over. One of the drawbacks of these being so large is that they don't flex very well. Just from shooting B-rolls in these, they are super creased up already and they really don't look that good. They crease in such an odd manner. They kind of bow out and they could create some pressure points when you're playing basketball. Originally, we didn't know what these were made out of. We did the Shore A test and they come in right around 45 to 50 Shore A, and then we burn them and they burn exactly like foam. So these are more than likely a compression molded EVA foam glued to this upper. Another interesting part of this upper is that Adidas gives you the most premium small piece of leather. On the macro shot, you can see it does have a little bit of a grain. It's around one and a half millimeters thick, which is average for a sneaker leather. On the puncture test, it performed at 103 pounds. So not a bad leather actually, but just not a lot. Moving to the liner, this is pretty much just like a sock fit shoe other than the chassis system around it. I thought it was gonna be a lot less breathable than it was, but it performed pretty well. Moving inside to the insole, you can see 
see, it is a molded insole, so not die cut, but definitely just one of those ortholite ones. Moving from the insole to the midsole, Adidas says that this has their Jet Boost midsole, which I think is just a variation on their original Boost foam technology. It comes in at 13.5 Shore A, and on the ball drop test, it got 13 inches. So it's not bad, but it's actually not as good as on the LeBron 21. Moving down to the outsole, it looks like just a rubber with some radial and herringbone traction and this interesting JH pattern. Should perform pretty well on the court and measures in at 60 Shore A. On the bar drop test, it got 6.1 inches, which is right in the middle. And on our puncture test, it actually got 84.5 pounds in the middle and 147 pounds on the shank. So the bottom loaded shank actually provides a lot of puncture resistance, but I'm sure it also provides a lot of responsiveness. As far as construction goes, I'll be interested to see when we cut it in half, how these wings come together, if the midsole is part of this sidewall. So far, not seeming all that futuristic. They're all different materials that we've seen before. They are applied in an interesting way. Let's cut them in half and see if they're just as crazy on the inside as they are on the outside. Our 30% off scratch knit sales live right now where we have all these hides and all these parts that have little flaws in them that we can't sell at full price. So instead of just throwing them away, we save them for a scratch and dent sale where we discount them 30%. They're just little cosmetic flaws. And so it's still covered by our lifetime warranty, but you get them a lot cheaper. So check them out below. Let's see how crazy it can get. Getting right into it, you can see it has a Jet Boost midsole, which is made out of those pellets. And so you can see the kind of lattice structure that it makes on the inside. It's right around 21 millimeters thick. It does actually have a fairly long plastic shank like we had tested with the puncture test. The rubber outsole is coming in right at four millimeters thick. So definitely should be durable enough on court, but definitely not outside. So it may not be as crazy on the inside as it is on the outside, but this heel section has a lot going on. It has the outsole rubber wrapping around, the two sidewall wings come together with this plastic piece. There's an internal heel counter and two ankle collars and this upper sock. All of this together means this is probably the thickest heel cross section we have ever seen on a sneaker or a basketball shoe. At its widest, it's right around 30 millimeters. So are these the future of basketball shoes? Well, I think these are all very standard materials, but I do think that they're applied in a new and interesting way. You can't deny that the iconography and the design are eye-catching and recognizable and unmistakable. They are super cool looking from close up, from a mile away, you can't miss them. But even though that these are sort of a new way to apply older and standard technology, EVA sidewalls on basketball shoes really aren't anything new. It looks like the future, but I don't think we're there quite yet. I definitely think that you're getting more for your money and something way cooler looking than the KD16 for the same price. I don't actually think that it pushes the needle for performance or innovation as much as it looks like it should. Anyway, let us know down below in the comments if you've had a pair of Harden Volume 8s and what you thought about them. What other basketball shoes should we do? Easy April's coming up. What easy should we cut in half? Thanks so much for your comments and feedback, guys. Peace.